Hi everyone, welcome back to the next part of the IUPAC naming course. So we are still in our introduction phase here and we are going to discuss prefixes and terms because when we start naming with the IUPAC standards, there's a whole lot of different terms and prefixes and sometimes suffixes that we have to adhere to our name in order to have it as a correct proper IUPAC name. So that's what we're gonna review here. Now if some of this doesn't make sense, immediately that's okay you're going to need some of this information to understand some of the upcoming lectures when we discuss our rules for naming so just hold in there if some of this doesn't make sense but most students that have gone through or been exposed to some form of naming are used to this so when we have a set number of carbons we will have a specific prefix associated with that now this can continue on and on depending on the number of carbons you have but in general the first 10 are going to be the most important and then you can go up and forward from there but if you have the first 10 you're going to cover the bulk of examples that you'll see in an undergraduate class or in most um, examples that are out there so what I have here is a table and this table tells you the number of carbons and then the prefix that is associated with the parent chain if you are to have that number of carbons as your parent chain so most people know of the term methane, which is the gas that would be released when we have sort of agricultural sort of stuff when we talk about cows. Um, you can also have ethane, propane, butane. So you can see here the number of carbons, one carbon being methane, two would be eth, three would be prop, four would be but. So when we talk about butane lighters, the fuel in there would be a four carbon based uh, carbon chain. And then we continue forward. Some of these prefixes probably make sense if you're used to counting with prefixes. So pent would be for five, and then six would be hex, seven would be hept, eight would be oct, nine would be non, so nonane, and then ten would be dec, like decane. And then if you continue forward, you can see I have 11 through 16 included here, but you'll sort of pick up the pattern. 11 and 12 are a little bit different. Uh, they're undec, so if you think of like un as in uni, so undec, and then you have dodec for 12, or dudec, and then 13 is tridec, 14 is tetradec, 15 would be pentadec, 16 would be hexadec, right? And you could keep going, it would be 17 is heptadec, octadec, nonadec, and you can move forward like that. Now, uh, in the book, in the uh, textbook or the guide that I give you, I will go all the way up through 20 on there, um, just so you have it for reference. Now, terms. There are a couple of terms that we want to familiarize ourselves with, because we're going to be throwing them around a lot when we start talking about the naming rules. So the first one is parent chain or main chain. You're going to hear me use these interchangeably. This is the longest carbon chain that's present without retracing any of your steps when you're counting the carbons. So you cannot take a carbon, count it, and then recount it in some form or fashion. So let me give you just a brief example here so you can see what I'm talking about. If we were to draw a carbon chain, make sure we give a couple of these here, and then we've got some methyl groups, right, that are hanging off here. The longest part of the chain is going to be this center piece right here. So it would be, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our main parent chain is going to be eight carbons long, and it would be considered an octane here. Now what's important is I could not count this by saying here's one, two, three, four, and then come up here to this methyl and say five, and then come back down and say six, because I already counted this carbon as four. So it would not be appropriate to recount it to try to increase the carbon count. You can only go in one direction at once you've picked that direction, and you have to stick with it without recounting any carbons, okay? And so that brings us to our next point. These little side groups that are hanging off of your main parent chain are called substituents. And a substituent is going to be any side chain or grouping of atoms, because it's not always a chain. Sometimes it might be a fluorine or a chlorine, uh, bromide, stuff like that. 
So it's going to be any side chain or group of atoms that are not a direct part of the parent chain. So they are coming off of the parent chain, but they're not counted in the parent chain when determining the parent chain itself. They're sort of like the decorations on the side of the chain, and they will be included in the name, but we have to approach them in a separate fashion when we get ready to start naming with our rules. And then finally, you're going to hear me talk about branched chain, especially as we get further into uh, the course here, you're going to hear this term fairly often. And this is a substituent that consists of branching or splitting carbon patterns as opposed to a linear side chain or a group, right? So again, if we take a look at a brief example here, if I just create a long parent carbon chain here, if I had, let's say, an ethyl group coming off of position four here, okay, that would just be a regular straight chain. I know there's bends in it, but as far as uh, chemical perspective, right, it's just going from one carbon to the next, to the next, to the next. There's no real splitting pattern. But what I'll do now is over here in position six, I'm gonna draw an isopropyl group. So that would be this carbon here, and then it's going to split or take two different paths here like that. So that's an isopropyl group, and we'll learn about all the different branch chains. But this grouping right here would be referred to as a branched side chain because it doesn't just take a linear path. If it was taking a linear path, right, this would have just gone on for another carbon here, and we would have called that propyl instead of isopropyl, which is giving it that split. So that's what a branched side chain is when we get ready to start referring to that. So that pretty much covers the prefixes and the terminology. So when you hear me starting to say ethane, octane, hexane, you know what I'm talking about. It's really referring to the number of carbons. So make sure if you are not used to that, you want to study that in your guide that is included with this course, and you want to familiarize yourself with it before going on. Especially, like I said, the first 10 are going to be crucial uh, because a lot of our side chains are going to be under 10 carbons and you're going to be using that type of naming system very often. So I will see everybody for the next course where we will get started with some of our rules.